Blue Origin just pulled off something no one thought possible. New Glenn landed successfully on its second flight ever. The CEO calls it historic, and it's a clear message to SpaceX. The game is on. But Blue Origin isn't stopping there. They have an audacious plan to outdo SpaceX and even shock NASA with early reusability tests next year. Pull it off, and they'll cement their place in the elite reusable rocket club. Yet behind the confidence, Blue Origin is still dealing with a lot of problems. So, does Blue Origin really have a chance against SpaceX? Or is this just hype? All that, right here on today's Tech Map episode. In mid-November, a moment long in the making finally arrived, Blue Origin's new Glenn Booster descended through the Atlantic skies and settled onto a floating platform with remarkable precision. For many watching, it felt almost surreal. A company founded 25 years ago, long criticized for its slow progress, had just stuck a pinpoint barge landing on only its second attempt. The reaction was immediate. Supporters who had always hoped Blue Origin would eventually rise to the challenge felt vindicated. Others pointed out something even more striking. Because the first attempt was lost during descent, this successful landing might as well be considered their first real one. And for a brand new heavy lift launcher, sticking it on the first legitimate try is no small achievement. The timing also couldn't be more significant. Blue Origin is now competing directly with SpaceX for NASA's Artemis III lunar landing contract. New Glenn's flawless recovery gives the company something it has lacked for years. Momentum. And Blue Origin really wants to strengthen its case even further. How? Reusing this same booster on the next New Glenn launch, planned for early next year. This coincides with the time SpaceX plans to launch its Starship Block 3 hardware. For the first time, it seems Blue Origin is putting pressure on itself to launch before SpaceX. As usual in the past, they often failed, and this time it is unclear whether there will be a plot twist. But there's real concern here. Refurbishing this first returned stage could push back the next launch attempt. New Glenn is ultimately designed for rapid turnaround, two to three weeks between flights, but no one expects that speed on the very first refurbishment cycle. Still, Jeff Bezos's rocket company believes that this delay might be worth the risk. Even a slip of a few weeks might not significantly affect its long-term flight plans. The next new Glenn mission is expected to carry the Blue Moon Mark I lander an uncrewed spacecraft built to test key systems for NASA's Artemis V mission in 2029. Launching Mark 1 in early 2026 would be ideal. But if the schedule slips, the mission isn't in jeopardy. In fact, CEO Dave Limp has already said the lander can be moved to the fourth new Glenn launch if needed. The message is clear. There's no rush, and the development timeline remains firmly under control. Another concern raised by critics is cadence, whether a delay will hinder Blue Origin's ability to ramp up into a reliable launch rhythm, but this misses a more fundamental issue. Cadence is impossible without hardware. As of now, the company hasn't committed to a fixed number of New Glenn flights for 2026. Their focus this year is instead on building inventory. According to Limp, Blue Origin aims to produce around 20 second stages annually, ensuring the infrastructure exists before any promise of rapid launch cycles. As he put it, that's the next step that we're going to have to sit down with the team. There's also the matter of reputation. If Blue Origin manages to reuse this same booster on its second flight, or even beyond, it would send a strong signal to the space industry. At that point, Few could deny their place in the reusable rocket club. And that brings back a story many in the space community still remember. When SpaceX first landed a Falcon 9, Jeff Bezos quipped, Welcome to the club. So when Elon Musk congratulated Blue Origin on New Glenn's landing and notably skipped the jab, 
Many saw it as a moment of quiet restraint. A rivalry decades in the making had come full circle. Even with growing confidence inside Blue Origin, Dave Limp has kept the company's messaging disciplined, optimistic, but cautious. And that's why, alongside the plan to refurbish New Glenn's first booster, he revealed a quiet but important backup option. Simply using a brand new stage. It's kind of a toss-up because the third booster is pretty far along in manufacturing, he explained. For Blue Origin, this backup serves as a lifeline. If refurbishment threatens to cause major delays, or if risking a second landing attempt with the same hardware feels too dangerous for the company's reputation, switching to a fresh booster becomes the safer move. And it's worth remembering, New Glenn isn't a typical rocket. It's heavier than Falcon 9, complex, and still in the earliest phase of its life cycle. SpaceX flew 15 Falcon 9 boosters before reusing one for the first time. In that context, Blue Origin's cautious approach looks far more reasonable. Another pressure point is demand. Limp noted that interest in New Glenn surged almost immediately after the landing. My phone has been fairly busy in the last 24 hours with customers coming out of the woodwork, which is a good problem to have, he said. In what so-called launch-constrained market, as Limp said, that kind of demand becomes a powerful motivator to get the vehicle operational as fast as possible. One of the most important potential customers is the U.S. Space Force. To certify New Glenn for national security space launch missions, the rocket must fly several more times, anywhere from 2 to 14, depending on how the evaluation proceeds. LIMP didn't disclose which certification path Blue Origin is pursuing, but he made one thing clear. The two flights already completed won't be enough. Still, both the technical and administrative processes are moving forward on schedule. This discussion sparked debate online. Some users saw the surge in customer interest as a clear sign of market confidence. Others wondered whether LIMP's comments were simply a PR move an attempt to impress investors. But that argument runs into a simple fact. Blue Origin doesn't have outside investors to impress. The company is privately owned, with Jeff Bezos remaining the majority, if not sole, financial backer. Much of its funding comes from Bezos selling Amazon stock, allowing the company to focus on long-term development without shareholder pressure. As for the broader space market, it's launch constrained, but not fully saturated. SpaceX is pushing the limits with roughly 15 to 16 launches per month and aiming for about 170 missions in 2025. That's a launch every 2.1 days, the fastest cadence the industry has ever seen. And yet, even SpaceX still has some room to expand. The market isn't overflowing, but demand remains strong enough that additional launch capability especially from a heavy-lift reusable rocket like New Glenn, could make a difference. So where does that leave us? Was Dave Limp exaggerating? Or was he simply describing a market that genuinely needs more rockets? And what should Blue Origin do next? Reuse their historic first booster, or push ahead with new hardware to keep the schedule moving? What do you think? Which path would you rather see for the third New Glenn flight, refurbished stage or fresh booster? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your perspective. Online, the reaction to New Glenn's successful landing was immediate, but so was the controversy. In the middle of the applause, one statement from CEO Dave Limp lit the fuse. Never before has a rocket this big landed successfully on the second try. It was bold, it was confident. And within minutes, the internet did what the internet does, split into two sides and start dissecting every word. What should have been a moment of celebration quickly turned into a debate about context. Viewers weren't just asking, did Blue Origin really do it? They were now asking, how impressive is this? Really? For many, Blue Origin's achievement seemed overshadowed by SpaceX's decade-long lead. After all, Blue Origin had just pulled off something SpaceX has performed more than a hundred times. 
And while Jeff Bezos' company was celebrating its first major recovery milestone, SpaceX was already landing something much larger. That's when a single online comment posted by a user named Wickwick ignited the argument. I guess technically he's right. The Starship booster is larger, and it landed on its first try. Suddenly, the comparison escalated. If Starship is bigger, and if its booster landed on the first attempt, was Blue Origin's achievement really worth all the hype? But the pushback was swift. Blue Origin supporters stepped in to clarify. The idea that Starship landed on its first try wasn't entirely accurate. For one, Starship boosters don't land. They're caught by Mechazilla, a tower designed to grab them mid-air, and before that first successful catch attempt, SpaceX went through a long chain of failures, explosions, and partial successes just to reach the point where the booster could even maneuver back to the catch zone. Others highlighted the difference in how both companies approached development. Blue Origin attempted a full physical landing immediately and succeeded on their second flight. SpaceX, by contrast, performed numerous virtual landings first, steering boosters toward the ocean to simulate descent profiles without attempting recovery. To be fair to BO, they went straight for physical booster landing attempts, succeeding on New Glenn Flight 2, whereas SpaceX went for virtual landing attempts before attempting a physical landing. Still, the comparison brings up a deeper truth about the two companies. SpaceX embraces a fail-fast, learn-fast philosophy. Each improvement, no matter how experimental, is flown immediately. Starship has evolved through a rapid cycle of testing, crashing, iterating, and flying again. Blue Origin, on the other hand, takes the cautious route, refining the design for over a decade before the first new Glenn ever left the pad. One approach is kinetic and aggressive. The other is methodical and controlled. And this is why the debate has gone far beyond counting attempts. It now touches on the very definition of a landing. Blue Origin follows the traditional method, firing engines, deploying fins, and touching down on its feet. SpaceX is attempting something entirely different, catching a skyscraper-sized booster with a giant steel tower. Two visions, two engineering philosophies, and two completely different interpretations of what it means to land a rocket. With New Glenn, the landing represented the first time the ultimate design of the recovery system was tested in a live flight. For Starship, each success is built on a mountain of iterative failures. Both achievements are impressive. Both push the boundaries of reusable rocketry, and both tell very different stories about how to reach the same frontier.